The Columbia Basin Project is one of the most pivotal pieces in keeping our agriculture systems in Washington so vibrant and alive. From potatoes to garlic, the water brought to our farmers helps produce some fantastic products. Today, we're visiting one of the most important pieces of the Columbia Basin Project, the magnificent Grand Coulee Dam. Without the benefit of having Grand Coulee Dam here, we wouldn't have the irrigation for the Columbia Basin Project. We wouldn't have power generation. Nick Simos is the Supervisor Reclamation Guide for Grand Coulee Dam. Now, although he sees this view every day, it never stops impressing him. Grand Coulee Dam is probably one of the coolest features in Washington. I mean, is it safe to say? I mean, this thing is massive. It is. At one time, it was the largest structure in the world. It's uh, 12 million cubic yards of concrete. It produces over 6,000 megawatts of energy. And if you look down there, the Nat Washington plant has six jumbo-sized generators in it. And with only two of those, it's enough to power a city the size of Seattle, Washington per day. Per day? Per day. So this thing is producing a lot of power. It is, yep. In addition to power, Grand Coulee Dam has drastically changed the landscape of agriculture here in Washington. The dam is a, a multifunction project. Uh, we have the pump generation plant essentially drafts water out of Lake Roosevelt and pumps it into a reservoir called Banks Lake. And that provides irrigation water for the Columbia Basin Project. It, provides water for, uh, I think, 11,000 farms. They grow everything from alfalfa to zucchini. So our Washington farmers are completely benefiting from this. 100%, yep, <laughs> yeah. Now Nick and I are taking a walk up to Banks Lake, where water is kept in a reservoir to be distributed all across the state. So this is the main feeder canal coming out of Grand Coulee. So this canal feeds into Banks Lake, which is the main reservoir for the irrigation of the Columbia Basin Project. So some of the water from Lake Roosevelt that's being built up is being channeled back up through this canal. Correct, yes. Okay. Yeah, it's pumped 280 feet uphill. Today, the dam provides power for 11 states, some of Canada, and can even provide power as far as Mexico. But when the dam was first under construction, that wasn't necessarily the plan. So they originally started out with wanting to create power as well as irrigation, but that power is only gonna be supplied to the local area. Oh, okay. It wasn't until World War II, then they decided to expand that amount of power and just really ramp everything up. So when it comes to an important piece of Washington State, Grand Coulee's in the heart of it for a reason. It is, and it's a long history. Although power generation is an amazing benefit of the dam, its original purpose was strictly agriculture. The original purpose for the dam was irrigation. Okay. Uh, power generation just happens to be an added benefit. So this is what it's all about right here. Now we're headed to the feeder tubes, where water is brought up from Lake Roosevelt below and then deposited into Banks Lake. I can feel the rumbling. That vibration you're feeling is all that massive amount of water, billion gallons per day, getting pumped up. They start down in the pump generation plant, about 280 feet below. And all that water is going out to the Columbia Basin, uh, supplying about 11,000 farmers. That's a lot of water, generating a lot of power. Yes, <laughs> yep. Well, if this isn't one of the coolest pieces of infrastructure I've ever seen, and probably one of the most important in our state. I mean, it seems pretty crucial to everything that we're doing. Yeah, we were pretty pivotal here. Yeah, indeed. So thanks for showing me around. Thanks for teaching me a little bit about how a dam really functions and its role in uh, our farmers. Well, thank you for coming out. Thanks Appreciate a lot, it. man.